What's going on, guys? This is Real Deal Fantasy HQ with your boy LQ back in for another great episode. In today's episode, we are talking about Carson Wentz and his 2021 fantasy impact, people. It's going to be a great season. We're going to have to, you know, adjust to seeing Carson Wentz, you know, in an Indianapolis Colts jersey. But hey, what does he mean for fantasy? What does he mean in real life? Is he going to be good? Are they going to make playoffs again? We don't know. So I'm going to break it down for you guys today. So I don't want to waste any more time. So let's get right into the episode. So if you are living under a rock and you don't know, Wentz is on his way to the Colts. He will be a Colt going into the 2021 fantasy football season. He is out of Philly. I think it was best for, you know, both parties. I definitely think for his mental mental health, I should say, you know, Philly ripping him every chance that they got. And they're going to rock with Jalen Hurts. I think that was kind of an emotion they took with taking Hurts so early, you know, in the draft. So therefore they had Wentz's, you know, backup basically ready to take over his job anyway. And Hurts didn't look terrible. I definitely like his decision making. He's mobile. He can, you know, stay in the pocket, take a hit. He looks tough. You know what I mean? So I definitely think, you know, Jalen Hurts is, has a bright future ahead of him. And Wentz is going to be looking to revamp his career. So what does this mean for fantasy? So First off, right now, they have Carson Wentz at QB 23, which isn't terrible, people. I don't think that's a, a bad ranking. I don't think that's, you know, a terrible ranking for Carson Wentz, being that, you know, he just had like a career low in everything and a career high in interceptions and et cetera, et cetera. So I think QB 23 is fair. But my opinion, what I project, I think he's going to be QB 13, being that he can live and breathe in that realm where the Baker Mayfield, the Matt Ryan, Stafford, and even Jalen Hurts. That's where I believe that he can live and breathe there. So from QB 13 to QB 17, I think that's where he'll probably end up. I definitely think he has a chance to revamp his career, being that he's back with, I know you're tired of hearing it, Frank Wright, blah, 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 MVP season 2017, et cetera, et cetera. We heard this for the longest for the last three weeks, you know, or even further out. But I definitely feel like, you know, Carson Wentz has a chance to be fantasy relevant week to week, but it's a matter of how you go about the draft about getting Carson Wentz on your, on your squad. So I definitely want to mention, you know, he's going from an upgraded O-line. Definitely. You know, the Eagles being 19th and in, in their O-line terrible. They're at the bottom of the table. It's definitely not something that was helping, you know, Carson Wentz's case of actually staying the starter. I don't completely, here's the thing. I don't completely blame Wentz for being bad. It was the miscommunication between him and Doug Peterson. It was the old line trash, the wide receiver core, et cetera, et cetera. The play calling, it was very questionable. So definitely think that is something to throw into that, you know, equation of why Wentz needed to leave. But again, he's going from a 19th ranked old line to a seventh ranked old line. And here's the thing. He's going there with pieces, people. Jonathan Taylor, they have a great running back. They have a great, you know, uh, old line that that ball can, the ball can move you know with Wentz to where he doesn't have to worry about being the hero to make something out of nothing because I know we remember he's still thrown for over four thousand yards with a bunch of nobody wide receivers in 2019 so I definitely respect that he still managed to do that but this last season I think he was just mentally checked out I think it was just a bad situation for him and oh, excuse me thank God he he's out of there so. It definitely didn't help Wentz being sacked, you know, 50 times, you know, even though he didn't even finish the season at the starter. So I'm pretty sure with him finishing second of most sacked quarterbacks, we can understand if he completed the entire season as a starter, I'm pretty sure he would have been in like the 65, 70 range to, you know, beat Russell Wilson where Russell Wilson was at 52. So he wasn't that far from being number one and he didn't even finish the season. So I'm pretty sure if he did, there you go. Now here's the thing about the old line with, you know, the Colts. So, Fred Rivers was only sacked 19 time, 19 times. They were ranked 28 among starting quarterbacks of, you know, sack quarterbacks. So I definitely think him being sacked 19 times is something Carson Wentz can live with, or if they sack him less, cause he's a mobile, you know, semi mobile quarterback. I, I could say Philip Rivers is 55 years old. I don't see him running out of the pocket and trying to scramble and extend the game. So I definitely think, you know, Wentz can go there and get that number even lower than 19 is what I'm trying to get at. So they don't allow their quarterback to be touched that much. So I definitely think this is another case why, you know, Wentz can revamp his career and be fantasy relevant. But again, I have him ranked QB, you know, 13. They have him right now as of now you know, QB 23. So you're probably thinking, why do I think, you know, he can rise, you know, 10 spots. I definitely think, you know, the Colts having the fourth most salary cap 
they can use that money to go get a wide receiver people. This is crucial. This is what they need to do. Being that, you know, Zach Pascal or whatever you say his name and T.Y. Hilton are probably going to be out on their way out. But I think they will probably re-sign Zach if they don't find anything in free agency. But I definitely think um, it's crucial that they bring in a stud wide receiver through free agency and even hit the draft. You know, why not? They seem to be drafting good. Their decision making is great. You know, they won 11 games, you know, last year. They went to the playoffs. They did lose, but they went to the playoffs with Phillip Rivers, who is 42 years old, I think. And I definitely think Wentz has a shot if they, you know, go out and get this stud wide receiver. It's very crucial. So I feel like if they go get a Kenny G, if they go get an Allen Robinson with this money and, you know, pay these guys for the longevity for Carson Wentz to finish out his, you know, his contract, I definitely think that moves Wentz up even further in the rankings. I definitely think he can move from 13 and get inside the top 10 or, you know, a little bit outside the top 10, QB 10, QB 11, or whatever the case may be. So I definitely think they need to go out and go get a wide receiver. I can't stress that enough. But if they go out and get like a Will Fuller or, you know, Corey Davis, I'm not going to move Carson Wentz up in my rankings. I'm not really going to be too happy that they went and got that or like a Curtis Samuel. I'm definitely not going to be happy with that, you know, addition to try to put weapons around Carson Wentz. Because if we really think about this wide receiver core, now if you look at the Eagles wide receiver core and then you look at the Colts wide receiver core currently right now, it's not much of a difference. It's same, same, you know. Same, same, but different. But still same. Carson Wentz wide receiver core right now, it's Michael Pittman wide receiver 79 that he finished last season. We saw him deal with injury. We saw the little flashes. We're hoping and praying he could take that step forward to be that elite wide receiver for that team. Then Zach, he finished wide receiver 55. T.Y. Hilton, also another 30-plus wide receiver who's probably on his way out to cash in. I think they're going to part ways, but he finished wide receiver 41. Paris Campbell suffered injury. He's one of the guys that I want to just pop off so I can have him on my roster and he can bring some fantasy relevance some week. But he suffered injury, so he was out for the season basically. But, again, not much of a difference when you look at the Eagles, you know, you know, wide receiver core. Now, Jalen Rager finished wide receiver 92. Greg Ward, he popped off for a little bit, wide receiver 58. Travis Fogelman, we definitely remember that little hot streak, two to three weeks, wide receiver 66. And then two old guys that were just injured the entire season. They just released a Sean Jackson, which had to be done. Both of them finished wide receiver 979. So irrelevant. So if you look at the core, the wide receivers, they need help. You know, you know, it's not much of a change. It's not much of a difference from him going from Philly to the Colts. So I definitely think that um, it should be priority number one for them to go out and get a wide receiver. Because like I said, I'm not going to be excited. They bring in a Nelson Aguilar or Corey Davis or Will Fuller or Curtis Samuel. These aren't guys that need to be on the roster to help Carson Wentz to take that next step. So I definitely think they have the cash space. They have the money, but they need to make something happen. They need to, you know, put somebody there that can make Wentz, you know, be a elite again in that MVP year of 2017. So it's possible. It's possible that they go out and get a Kenny G, but Detroit might want to keep him there. But I don't think Kenny G has any reason to stay in Detroit right now. They're probably going to tag him. They're not going to give him a, you know, a long-term contract being that he's coming off an injury, but they should definitely, you know, try to figure out how they're going to get Kenny G to the Colts. Definitely a hundred percent because, I definitely think that would be the best situation for both parties. I definitely think, you know, Detroit can spend the money elsewhere. They can try to focus on their rebuild right now with, you know, Jared Gall, because they have some pieces there with Hawk and DeAndre Swift and et cetera. So they have some type of, you know, head start on the rebuild. But again, Colts need to bring in somebody. I can't stress that enough. So Carson Wentz, he only brings super flex relevancy, relevancy only, only being that, you know, I wouldn't recommend him being your QB one and redraft one quarterback leagues being that you're taking a high risk because we also have to remember Carson Wentz's injury history. Wentz isn't the guy that I will wait in the late rounds to get, you know, in a QB one league. And I definitely think um, you have to put in consideration his history of injury because you're taking a high risk being that he's not a Tom Brady. He's not an Aaron Rodgers. He's not a Ben Roethlisberger. He's not a Matthew Stafford. These guys that we wait in later rounds and, you know, the 10th, 11th round to get a quarterback to be your QB one who give us the range between 25, 30 points a week. So I don't see that happening. Wentz is going to have some weeks where he's putting up 20 points and that's it. You know what I mean? I don't think he's going to be that QB one just yet right off the bat. And again, you're, you're, you're taking the risk with him and his injury history. So I would hate for you to be the guy that wait 
you know, with the late QB strategy and you wait that late and you get Carson Wentz as a QB one and then you're burned the first three weeks. You're setting the tone, you know, for the league if you're 0-3, you know what I mean? So you're not exactly making that much noise, but not saying you can't climb out of that, make trades, et cetera, waiver wire, whatever the case may be, but I'm not recommending that you wait for Carson Wentz and, you know, QB one redrafts. I definitely think Superflex, he is very relevant. I definitely think if you draft a Josh Allen or a Patrick Mahomes or, you know, uh, 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 Lamar Jackson, and then you get Carson Wentz as your super flex, I definitely think that's a good combo. I definitely think there's a chance to, you know, he can be to the QB one and to the moon fellas or whatever the case may be. But again, super flex, I think that's where he has standalone value. But in QB one leagues, you know, in redraft and you're waiting late for him, I don't recommend that at all. This value is literally going to depend on every single move from here on out. His value and redraft QB one leagues are very low for me. I again, I don't recommend it, but super flex, I recommend you go get a Carson Wentz to complement your Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes or et cetera. But I want you guys to understand, don't get your hopes up entirely being that we haven't seen him on a new team. We haven't seen him back in Frank Wright's system. We haven't seen him even, you know, get the chemistry or get, you know, familiar with the playbook and his wide receivers and et cetera. So I don't want you guys to go get your hopes up in dynasty or anything like that, thinking that, you know, this might be it where we can hit while it's hot, you know, buy low on Carson Wentz, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not too sure if that's, you know, the case here. I definitely have him on my wait and see list. But again, if you're going to go out and get him super flex, yeah, why not go ahead and pick him up to compliment your QB one. That's a elite guy that's giving you 25 to 30 points a week. You know what I mean? So I definitely think, you know, Carson Wentz and Indy is going to be something special to watch. Definitely going to keep my eye on it. if they won 11 games with Phillip Rivers. We can honestly say that Carson Wentz is probably better than, you know, Phillip Rivers. So that will be something that we need to see. And Hopefully he has himself a re-ramp career and we can stop killing him and ripping him and comparing him to Nick Foles who won them the Super Bowl, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe that all that will die. So this wraps up the episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Leave a comment below on what you guys think of the episode. And I'll see you guys next week for another great episode of Real Deal Fantasy HQ with your boy LQ. Peace.